Oh, yes. I'm uh, almost I'm almost coming. Keep it uh, 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 oh, yeah. uh, uh, Put on your headsets. I'm Howie Mandel. This is Howie Mandel Does Stuff. I'm Jacqueline Schultz's daughter. What? Oh, you're Jacqueline Schultz, my daughter. His. I thought you said you were... His. Your daughter. I thought you said ja uh, Jacqueline Schultz's daughter. But I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to them. To so them. His we're daughter. talking. And on today's show, we have a great guest. We have Robert Smigel. But before Robert Smigel comes out, um, one of his closest friends and one of my favorite people in the world... Wait, we're going to do some uh, technical stuff before this happens? Okay. No, we're not. Uh, Triumph, the insult dog has uh, insult appeared. Insult comic dog, Howie. Insult comic dog, Howie. Get it wrong. Get it wrong. No, yeah, it's wait, all right. Wait, wait, wait. Well, so anyway, we are going to... Are we good? Are we good? Are we focused? All right, Triumph. Just shoot for average, Howie. Be realistic. Are we good is a little much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> are we passable? Are we are we tolerable? <laughs> that's what you shoot for tolerable. That's all. I that's love all you need. The insults have already begun. <laughs> Before the beginning. It's what I do. It's what he does. I love this. <laughs> Triumph. Are you yes. thrilled to be here? Oh, Howie, we go so far back. This is very exciting. I remember all of those years. You know, I, go, I was an 80s comic, too. I performed in the sticks, and then I got my shot on The Tonight Show, you know? Right. And I killed, of course, and afterward, Johnny waved me over, and he pointed to the couch, and he said, Did you do this? Bad dog. No. <laughs> you ruined the couch. And I said, That's not poop. It's Howie Mandel. <laughs> <laughs> you, you dropped a cigar. I'll get it. You know, Triumph, yeah. actually, those over there, which you, nobody can see on camera, is the front row of The Tonight Show of Johnny Carson's... Actual uh, front row. That's the actual front row. Burbank? Yes. Yes. Not... How old do you how think many, How many uh, chairs you got there? Uh, Three. How many seats do you need? Three. No, no. One for each wife of Johnny's. <laughs> it's ah, very nice. I see what you did there. Very nice. Right. No, uh, we go way back. Howie, I'm so proud... I'm one of those people who gets to proudly say that I knew you at the very beginning, and here I am at what is clearly the end. Aww. Aww. <laughs> wow. I can't. I can't. No, I'm so that's old. That's what you do. I love it. I, I'm old. I, I'm good because they get meaner, Howie. Oh, that's it. Good. good. I, 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 don't, I don't expect you to be in a great mood with Robert's fist up your ass. <laughs> You should try it sometime. Okay. <laughs> I, Howie, no, we go right back. I'm so old, ladies and gentlemen, that I remember when Howie had hair and the respect of his peers. I don't remember that. You're oh. too young. Hey, you're too young. <laughs> Jacqueline, the insult daughter. Jackie, he's too young. I, I, by the way, I, you know, uh, back in the day, Howie used to be famous. Mm -hmm. People may know this for putting a rubber glove on his head. Yes, I was. In his comedy act. Yes, I was. Now he only does it when he has to kiss his wife. Patoomph. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Because he's a germaphobe. I, I love the patoomph. Patoomph. You that, know, well, you know, low budget. It's a podcast. I can't afford an actual. A rim shot. Actual rim uh, shot. So patoomph. Patoomph will do. <laughs> you don't always put a rubber, rubber glove on your head. Pardon me? That's why I was born. Get he it? didn't put the rubber glove. <laughs> that's right. That's Wrong head. That's the one time. Now it's just getting uncomfortable. Not because of the insults. He took a my five, God. by the way, Jackie, he took a five hour bath uh -huh. after conceiving you. Yeah. That's how freaked out he was. <laughs> it's nice to see your co host Jackie here. Jackie, I, I would call you as a, as his daughter, I'd call you a Nepo baby uh -huh. if this counted as being in show business. Yeah. But <laughs> unfortunately you're off the hook. Thank you. No, I kid. Thank Howie, you. you're still in show. He's, uh, you're still in show business. Sure he is. And I'm still in the French bulldog that I humped last night. <laughs> Fatumph. 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 Seriously, this is honestly the lowest point in my career since I was molested by Alf. Oh. Back in the 80s. No, it's I'm kidding. He's more than in showbiz. Howie, you still got that AGT gig, right? I do. That's right. Howie, it's weird though, you know, that you're host America's Got Talent since you're not actually American or talented. 
It's amazing. It's incredible. Patum. 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 Where's my cigar? Where the hell is this cigar? Whatever. Okay, it doesn't matter. You, you 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 have fun on that show though. I do. I have a yeah, lot of fun. Yeah. I, enjoy I would it. like to be a judge on that show. Really? Yeah. I think the producers would be too scared. They, I, I heard they said they would have to give me a shot collar like the one they gave Mel B. <laughs> 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 this show though. Now this show, this podcast wasn't affected by the actor strike, right? No, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. it doesn't wasn't. make sense to me though because I think you're an excellent actor, Howie. Thank you. Thank you. Like the way you act when you're listening. You, the, I do the joke. It's okay. Do it again. Do the joke, you stupid what? old Jew. Okay. You. I you, think you're an excellent hour ha actor. Hour. Actor. Oh boy. Get it together. Get it together. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Howie, I think you're an excellent actor. Just well, like, thank like, you. like the way you act, like you're listening when Jackie talks. Fatumf. <laughs> Fatumf. Fatumf. It's not an no. insult. That's the truth. I, it's, it's, that's why it's funny because yeah. it's true. <laughs> now, Howie, you have a you have a very substantial acting career, folks. Do you know? Do you realize Howie was the voice of Gizmo mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Gremlins? Right. Mm -hmm. I remember being on the set. I, I don't. For, interestingly, though, you didn't make a sound when I. Uh, do the joke over again. Howie was the voice of Gizmo <laughs> and Gravelins. Yes. But uh, interestingly, uh, Gizmo didn't make a sound when I banged him. <laughs> Let's just say I did not follow the don't get them wet rule. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you see. Oh. Is that okay to say a gross joke because you're a germaphobe? Can I say a joke that's disgusting like that? Yeah, I that's didn't touch okay. it. I okay. didn't touch you it. You didn't touch the joke. I didn't touch the joke. As long listen, as you listen. don't make my dad wet, he's okay. Oh, yeah. good. Okay, listen. We all know. <laughs> oh, triumph. Oh, nice. Oh, triumph. Oh, my God. I'm Fuck getting... me, triumph. Now ah, I'm getting wet. Ah. Fuck me, triumph. Now I'm getting wet. Stop. Oh, triumph. I'm so wet. Oh, oh triumph. Yeah. Fuck oh, me. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But not oh, after yes. midnight. Don't fuck me after midnight, triumph. I'm Don't. almost, I'm almost coming. This is truly oh, gross. This is truly sound. gross. <laughs> no, you know, seriously though, Howie's very smart. We all know he's a germaphobe, uh, but thank God he's made sure that nothing on his podcast will ever go viral. <laughs> Fatumf! Fatumf! <laughs> and with that, I leave you. Thank you, Triumph. Boring old Jew. Okay, we're going to run a commercial right now, and then we'll be back with Robert Smigel. For me to poop on. <laughs> All right, we're in a commercial. Um, Kenny, I don't love this lighting that you've come up with for the holidays. I Why? think you look pretty. All That's right, go, go ahead. Well, this is shady You're race. not supposed to have under lighting. Well, whatever. Tis the season of giving, so we're going to talk about Shady Rays. Get the perfect gift for a special someone, yourself, or both. Our friends at Shady Rays have the have you covered with their premium polarized shades and quick, uh, quick swap snow goggles. Oh, that's better. Yeah. So if you're going skiing or snowboarding, you can use Shady Rays for that too. Or if it's just really sunny, then you use Shady Rays. And they have so many different styles and so many different colors, and they're amazing, and I love them. I have them myself. I got a bunch of them. In a bunch of different styles. And the beauty is... Is that you, blocking the light? Yeah, listen, <laughs> I like the glasses. I don't like the lighting, Kenny. I don't like your work. But the truth is that uh, they also have a great guarantee. You know, if they the break... The protection. Yeah, if you lose them or they break them, what do you do? Well, if you don't love your Shady Rays or you break them or anything, you can exchange them for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Their team always has your back with personal and fast support, so you could contact them at any time. They are an amazing, amazing company. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out a very merry deal for this season. All you got to do is go to ShadyRays.com and use code Howie, for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses, try for yourself the shades rated the five stars by over 250,000 people. That's a lot of people who love these glasses, so it must be amazing. Um, okay, so one more time, how do they get them? And Kenny, you got to fix this lighting. This is giving me a headache. You go to ShadyRays.com and use code Howie for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Back to the uh, podcast. Oh, what's going? You gotta, you gotta take a call. No, somebody. Oh, oh, it's just good news about Leo. Okay, 
Okay. What? Tell me. Okay, so here it's we the are. Biggest animated no. whatever debut on Netflix. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're back. <laughs> we're back with Robert Smigel, who is the creator of not only Triumph but so many things. And right now, as we spoke, when we were in the break, you just got good news. There is a show, an animated movie, right now running on Netflix called Leo, starring Adam Sandler, written and directed by this man. And what news did cool. you just get? I think it says oh, that it was the number one uh, something on something. Great. That's he great. really knows Good how to promote. News. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Patum. Patum. <laughs> Patum. Oh, the biggest animated debut Netflix has ever had is what it says. In the history of oh, that's Netflix. Amazing. That's That's going back like four years to the creation of Netflix. But that is amazing. Netflix. But they've they had a lot years, of, they've, years, but they've debuted a lot no, of the know, big I blockbuster know. movies on, on there, and animated movies. This is, uh, if you don't know, Leo is an animated movie um, co-written by Robert Smigel, co-directed by, is it co-directed or just directed? No, co. co co-directed co by co Robert Smigel with, with uh, Adam Sandler, Bill Burr, many, many people, and not Howie Mandel. Deliberately, yeah. No, yeah. There was, no, but that's a good. I love that was pushing so hard for you, right? You know, and Adam was just like, "No fucking way, buddy! No <laughs> fucking way!" I, I, I just, I don't like the guy. I don't. I, 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 you know, I know he's great. I know, I know it'd make the movie huge, but I, I can't work with him. He's so mean. He just thinks you're. That's great. You that, are was an a, that was a great. You are an asshole. That's from my daughter. Yeah. That's from. That's, well, that's who he heard true. it from. He heard it from Jack. Uh, you know, Why did you tell him? Secret I, I, conversations. I, I, I didn't know I was supposed to withhold that. I'm sorry. I thought I Me thought... and Sandy had secret conversations together and you weren't supposed to tell Sandy him. Sandy Wernick? No. Oh. Sa Sandler. Oh, you Sandy. Call him I call him Sandy. Sandy. That's Ooh. that's our That's a new one. Mm -hmm. Most people call him the Sandman. A Sand. A Sand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she has her own name. She'll make up a nickname that nobody else shares. She has a manager named Sandy. That's oh. yeah. Wern it. Got throat. Wern it. Sandy Wern it. Yeah. Well, that's perfect. I represent Adam and he's, I mean, listen, if you want to work with Adam, you're going to have to go through me because I You don't know him. how good an impression that is <laughs> because nobody knows Sandy Wernick. No. But, but that is so fucking right on. Well, he did a whole movie called Sandy Wexler a couple of years ago. Yes. He's done three movies that are based on impressions that I taught him. <laughs> You do a lot of impressions. Well, I used to do that stuff on Conan where he would talk to the photo. You know the thing with the lips? You know the thing where he would hold up a big picture of, or there'd be a big picture and then there was just a hole for the he, lips? Yeah, he would talk to like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Or, yeah, or I know. Clark that, he was the lips. He was always the lips. He was always the voice. He was always 90, the voice. 90% of them, yes. Yes. 93. Jackie's not so impressed not, at all. <laughs> well, I'm listening to always and then 90%. You're a liar, Dad. I'm an exaggerator. Exaggerator. It's, it's, he, he, he couldn't possibly know he wasn't there. I know, but he makes shit up like he does know. But I know who you are, and I know what you do, and I know I you never hire me. The bot, I, I, I hired you for Night of Too Many Stars. Yes. <laughs> That's where he got the title. I it was minute. Night of Many Stars, and then they went, okay, fuck it. Yeah. That's why Mandel. never Once again. Now it's too many. I was, yeah. yeah, exactly. I was like, how are we going to make the audience feel there's too many? <laughs> Howie, we man. Book Howie. <laughs> 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 no, wait. I also, I did hire you. For what? For that puppet show we did a couple of years ago. Let's be real on Fox. Oh, right. Remember, nobody remembers that. It's so forgotten that you were in it. Do you, you know that? The, but but some of your best work is the work that nobody sees. That's true. Do you know that? That's, uh, that's how I feel. Uh, oh, it's, no, it's maddening. It, it, it's maddening. Is it maddening? It yeah, is. You no. know what? I feel like you're, uh, you, I put you and Albert Brooks kind of in the same, <laughs> but you're very similar. I think your, your sense of humor and, and the, your and ability to try things. Compliment. Yes. But uh, he did this great show. He did this pilot years ago. If you have a chance, go to YouTube. We, we could uh, look well, it was called. And I don't know if you, do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, you know I, what I'm talking about. Do you I'm know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm familiar Are with it. Are you familiar with your work? I wrote it with Conan. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And it was with Adam West. It was with the great, late Adam West. Yeah, who In passed. that order, great and late. Yeah, he he was uh, he played Batman. Do you know who Adam West was? No, no, I know. This is young. I know the kids she's, with them. She's, she's almost forty. I'm not that You're young. Almost forty, and you don't know Adam West. I don't know anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, she's no, she's know. my stupid, <laughs> stupid. child. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is not a good podcast. <laughs> Done with my stupid child. 
<laughs> but uh, it was it was like an homage to all those weird uh, shows. Why don't like we just Man make it up? Make up? Make up a show that she'll be impressed with. Go ahead. I did a pilot uh -huh. called "That's Taylor," uh -huh. and um, <laughs> you know where Taylor Swift played a superhero. Uh huh. You, you know, know Taylor Swift. Is? I would know that though. This is a bad. I would know if she played a superhero. Did she? No, it, the pilot never got. <laughs> no, it's like how he says the pilot never got picked oh, up. Oh, oh, yeah. Pilot never got picked up. She, but it was so funny. Everything she, you've done is funny. Everything, everything except the show. You'll see. You'll see. Yeah, I'm this a, episode. This is yeah. I'm 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 this more is, of a listener. This. <laughs> <laughs> we. Anyway, I want to say before the the reason not only. Am I thrilled to have you here because I'm a huge fan? But Leo, I just want to make sure that people will put a link to uh, remind people to watch Leo on Netflix. It really it's with is all, uh, Bill Burr and Bill every, Burr, yeah, and everybody. You did hire a Apparently lot of people. Apparently, people else? don't Cecily need a Strong, yeah, from Saturday Night Live. Yes, and Jason Alexander's in it. He does e his podcast. Everyone in this except place. you. No, that's it. Really, those are the those are the four big names. And you did a lot of the voices. I did a couple of voices in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You I, like directing I animation. Animation is where it's I. It's hard, man. But you've done a lot of it. Well, I mean, when I did the, I did cartoons for a Saturday Night Live. Have you heard of Saturday Night Live? Uh, yeah, uh -huh. I yeah. I know Saturday Night Live. You <laughs> fucking smart ass. Do you, do you, how do how far back do you go? Like, who was the first cast when you watched Saturday Night Live? Was uh, it like Sherry O'Terry? Michael Shea. <laughs> no. Yeah. Sherry O'Terry? I like Chris Farley and stuff when I Oh, okay. Yeah. But well, you I, you didn't watch that live. I didn't live. watch it live. The, I went back and watched it. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah I don't think I ever watched The kids watch YouTube live. now. The kids oh now. No one Yeah, but well, that's how she live. watched so she's fans of things that were that's that's considered classic. But I mean when you were like 15, did you not watch television? No. no I didn't watch really? Saturday Night Live. Really? No, I she watched was, MTV. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. watch like TRL. Right. Carson yeah. Daly. I did a show that's called That's My Carson. Uh-huh. I wrote a pilot for him. Did that not air? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just making shit up to, to get oh, Jackie, I believed it. To get I believed Jackie it. interested. You got me. I did I did I did uh bring Triumph to the MTV video awards once. You've seen Triumph. I watched and that. I, and we love no, Triumph. I know Triumph. I yeah, watched, yeah, yeah. So I heckled Carson Daly. Mm -hmm. Uh and the best I, was the R N C stuff. The RNC stuff, which was that? The, 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 um, uh, maybe it wasn't RNC. You went to the uh, conventions. You went to, uh, did all the political. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm trying to get Jackie to. Oh, okay, sorry. You know, keep I'm her sorry. No, I got it. Person. You're cool. I got it. This no, whole episode no. is you know, about I'm trying to impress cool. my daughter. You know, trying I'm to not tell that cool, my daughter though. who he is. <laughs> It really bothers I you. I love, I love that I'm having you I'm on because to, I'm so thrilled, and you're spending the entire fucking episode I just trying want to Jackie not to Jackie, be bored. You know I did. I'm not bored. Okay, I'm not right. bored. She knows okay. you're funny. And I'm not that cool. I'm old now too. I'm considered old. Which I know makes, yeah. that doesn't help his I'm sorry. cause. <laughs> I'm sorry. Most people I know who are 39, they come up to me and they're like, "I grew up with Conan." But I have kids that will love your movie. They will, will watch your movie, yes. They will. Actually, yeah. you will too, because it makes fun of parents and teachers. And I was a teacher, so I'm really- You and were a teacher? I had, yes, yeah. and I had a classroom Ooh. pet, so I'm into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, this movie, it was funny because when the early reviews came out, there were some critics who were like, it doesn't know what it wants to be. Is it for adults or is it for kids? And that was like the whole point. That's the best part of is the that, animated movies, that, is you want the parents to love it too. Yeah, and it's not like they, it's not like it has inside like- pop culture jokes that are like, you know, only adults would get it because they have like a cultural reference. It's more about, you're just laughing at like entitled parents and substitute teachers and that, and just school politics, that kind of thing. Why, so, where did you go, where did you garner your school politics in that? Well, thing? I have kids right now. Right. Who are now they're 15. Oh, I have an older son with autism, as you know, who's 25, but but I have twin boys that are 15. And when I started writing this movie, uh, they were like in fourth grade and they had already had like two substitute teachers take over, like two pregnant teachers. Are you sure they were who pregnant? Were replaced. Uh, that's a good question. And were know? they, if they I were- I think there were some parents demanding uh, <laughs> that they be tested to prove it because they were so indignant about getting a substitute. So I didn't pay for this teacher. Well, it's, a, it's one and a half teachers, right? Some substitutes are really good. Some substitutes. We've had mixed results with substitutes. Yeah. Did you ever substitute? No, but I was pregnant and I had maternity leave when I was yeah. teaching. And so we had a long-term sub that was in my classroom. And you were happy with the work that they did? 
Well, yeah, because I was at a charter school, so they actually hired a long-term sub that worked at the charter school, and it wasn't oh. a random person. Right. And so that person has been there for years, and we knew them and stuff. So it was all good. This this part is really boring. Though. I know. No, yeah, it's sorry. not boring. <laughs> it's boring. It's boring. <laughs> no, it's relevant to the movie because so in our movie, the substitute replaces this really sweet teacher who's all about positive reinforcement. And the substitute is like some 75 year old bitter old lady who's mm -hmm. just, you know, pulling out like, um, you know, demerit things and uh, and brass knuckles. And, and she's just uh, totally old school and, and hilariously mean and, and useless. But and, what, and, and, and you've been you have a history in a long history in animation. Yes. Uh, all the Saturday Night Live stuff. Which yeah. Is, uh, it was called the Fun uh, TV the Fun House. TV Fun House, TV. which was the uh, ring a bell. Ring a bell. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you separate all the words, I think she'll. They sounds right. TV right? and Fun House. TV and Fun House. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I know those words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I really don't know anything. Like I really, I, I really am stupid. I'm sorry. I don't think it makes you stupid. No, but that's her thing. <laughs> that's, I, that's her thing. Oh, that's that her thing. thing. Don't take it away from her. <clears throat> Nothing yeah. better than a teacher who's stupid. Oh, <laughs> really uh, right. But it made the students feel so good about themselves. That's yes. that's really that's the new trend in I'm education. I'm so much now. smarter so than, much. than Mrs. This is the ultimate Mrs. progressive Mandel. education. The teacher presents themselves mm -hmm. as dumber than the student right. to boost the self esteem of the student. That was a point. Yeah. That was a point. Yeah. That was no, a point. That's that's very that's state of the art. <laughs> Education. My kids felt so good about themselves after the year. That's was That's wonderful. But yeah. the next year they were That's really wonderful. left in the dumps for. for uh, I was a good teacher, by the way. Uh, but let's not. We keep okay, flowing but, over okay. to you. I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to Robert. You're making it seem I'm like sorry. I wasn't. Okay, I'm gonna stop being polite. Uh -huh. She was a really good student. She taught in the inner city. Teacher. Really good teacher. teacher. No, you weren't that great a teacher. She was, I was a really, a really good, good teacher. I was, she was nationally really board certified. I was a really good teacher. That's it. We could go on. And I would imagine that they are certified board right okay, now. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Right? We can move on. Feel free to comment. Move on. Um, you have a, a really good knack for uh, um, impressions, which we were talking about a minute ago. Yeah. So I taught I taught Adam Sandy Wernick. I taught him Bernie Brillstein. How does Another, Bernie, Bernie Brillstein? Yeah, is, is to understand that there are certain people when we did let me tell you something he he was he was like he was he he was the first manager of everybody of on everybody Saturday, on saturday night on live saturday from night jim night belushi live. and everybody well, john belushi I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what i meant i don't yeah, know why yeah, i said yeah. jim because <laughs> jim belushi really has not john never lived up to the level of jim too. pardon me because yeah. you're stupid too well the apple didn't fall far from the bush <laughs> do apples grow on bushes <laughs> No, but they fall from trees. You know what? Anyway, <laughs> what, uh, but you, you also did me. You also I did, did you. You did me, and and we got a tape. You, you oh, sent us a tape. Yes. This is uh, this is Robert doing me. Watch. This is who's on first. How we doing? Who's on first? <laughs> I thought that was you for a second. <laughs> You got my. That's good. And that's the Pee Wee Herman. Okay, that's okay. my friend Doug so Dale. Pee Wee Herman. Oh, oh. This is what made me. This, what made me, this is what bought our first house. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a strong, big nose, it's pretty easy to impersonate Howie. And that's that's you doing me. And that's there I me. And that's just stealing your act. Well, this is how it's done. There you go. Wow. That was it. Look at those parachute pants. I <laughs> those were it. parachute pants. I never See, understood that term, but yes. I should have had parachute pants. So that the premise of that sketch, this is like I'm 24 years old, and it was Pee Wee Herman and Howie Mandel performing Who's On First and just completely wrecking it with props and and aside and then there was a guy playing uh clint eastwood, clint eastwood who well. sat it up yeah but that yeah. was a sort of we just sort of stuck that bit and believe it or not yeah. that's that's i auditioned for snl with that bit did me, you really me and my friend doug yes and you got it as a writer i got it as a writer he was like hmm. Lauren was it's like, funny that you got it as a writer because the thing that yeah. and i'll say it about myself yeah. i had nothing 
you know, I had fucking nothing. I had no material. And I think you played into that too. Cause I well, was at the end when I'm just going, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, I've told this story before, but okay. you know, because I, because I, I, um, I got on stage as a dare. I wasn't a comedian. Really? I was not, uh, I had no aspirations to be in show business or anything. And then I thought the joke was, I went, okay. And I got on stage, and then when I got on stage, I noticed the audience was waiting for something. And then it became like, okay, okay, all right, yeah. okay. Uh, <laughs> you want to hear something? <laughs> Did you hear that? You know, and it was amazing. Like, I had nothing, and and I, you just went with that. I went with that. And I had the glove in my pocket because I, I have OCD, and I didn't want to touch any. I carried gloves, rubber gloves. Oh because my god! To go to that's public amazing. public restrooms. I had no idea. Yeah, so I pulled it over my head, and I popped it off, and they roared. And then I said, "Good night." I had enough. Uh, wherewithal to know that that's the that big was laugh. your topper. That's my topper, and I left. And the owner. Where the, was this? What yuck yuck? This in, in Toronto. Canada, in yuck yucks, sure. In Toronto, and and I had an and the, uh, Mark Breslin, who owned the place, said, "You got to come back uh, next, <laughs> next week." Yeah, yeah, and I said, "For what?" He goes to do it again. I go do what? Is so, it really that it yeah. was that spontaneous? That's and, spontaneous. That's amazing because, yeah. like, when I saw you back then, I was like, I had this whole. I had imagined like a very conscious choice that you were making at the time, like because it became and, it became conscious because as yeah. I realized that they were yes laughing at my, I found it unconsciously right, and then I realized yeah you I'm know, gonna go with this I'm yeah. gonna go with this no of course but and it became harder and harder for me to go <laughs> and yeah, then it because became an it's act not you because right. it's not you right but it was a character and you did it beautifully. And it's amazing to me that it was that spontaneous because I remember thinking back then, both watching you and Pee Wee back then, that these guys are making a very clear statement. Like they are reacting to like, like the Woody Allen kind of, or, or erudite kind of, yes. even George Carlin. Right. Like it, they are, they are, it's a celebration of stupidity. Right. Celebration of ignorance. Right. And like, you know, and so you're taking kind of, it felt like you were sort of, Taking the baton from Andy Kaufman a little bit, and, and, I, I and Andy and, Kaufman was one of my favorites. Yeah, he's he's amazing. And I used to do things that you didn't, re but I, and then I found uh, comedy itself to be funny. So I, I remember going on stage at times, even like that, and going, uh, I would just do like fifteen minutes of "Did you ever notice?" And they were just right. things that you noticed. Right. I had no had no punchlines. No punchline. Did you ever <laughs> notice that when you turn on the light in the room and it's just bright? <laughs> and, and, and it would get big laughs, right? Right. Did you ever notice that when you? Yeah, it's so course. much easier to go downhill than uphill. Yeah, because you you're that? doing, you're commenting on comedy, comedy. the way Steve, Steve Martin Steve did. It Martin. was like a modern art form of comedy. But what That's was so funny is on Saturday Night Live, I saw Marty Short would do me. Were you there when Marty Short was in the cast? I was not. Oh, yeah, he did you when, in that one Ebersol season. I yes, he did me. And then when I watched people do me, it was just like, you caught the essence of me. Of, I just thought that was really good. And you kind of look like me, my own daughter. I right. thought it was right. you. Right. I have, yeah. every I have Jew the with Jufro the, and Me all too. The, you know? Yeah, the nose oh, the and the Jufro. Days. Yeah, but... Um, Man, that is so fascinating. I'm, I'm just thinking back. Uh, so you did, and then you kind of walked away from that. Well, just because I, I love. How long did you, were you going to sustain that? Yeah, sustain? you know, I'm, I'm now in my uh, late 60s. Yeah. I'm almost 70 years old. It's really right. hard for me. <laughs> no, but even like, but no, but you were kind of past that even in the Yeah, 90s. because it just didn't feel real. Right. And that's right. not what I find funny. And I've always done comedy for me. Yeah. I did comedy, f I'm being, yeah. I did it for me. Yes. I never have done it. I, I'm, I feel here, yeah. real lucky that I have a career and I have notoriety and right. I've been able to uh, yeah. uh, capitalize on whatever it is. But for all intents and purposes, I'm my biggest audience and I don't really right. care and I need to do what makes... And, yeah, and that was I've, the problem with me as a stand-up. You know, I started... The first, I did not know you did stand-up. Yeah, I did stand-up. Well, I, I had no aspirations either. I thought... I was going to be a dentist because I was funny. You come from dentistry, yes, right? Yes, I You're... come from dentistry. Right. <laughs> His dad was a... Nobody is a dentist unless their dad's a dentist, pretty much, I think. Was that forced upon you? Did you have... It wasn't to... forced upon me. My dad was the greatest. He's my ultimate hero. And he, he was very innovative. He developed the tooth bonding technique. Like before tooth bonding, there was caps and people would literally shave. So when you get bonding, that's... You've been smiggled. 
I don't have any of it. I actually have nice teeth because I got them from my mother, who he was obviously attracted to because she had nice teeth. Wow. My, but, but <laughs> no tits. Great, great teeth. teeth. <laughs> oh, you should see the knockers. But no, um, my dad uh, wanted me to be, I, I thought I'd just be a dentist because he had an incredible practice. Right. And I didn't think I could succeed at anything else. And the only thing I was good at was being funny. But I didn't think, I just thought I could make strangers laugh. Right. I mean, I couldn't make strangers laugh. You could not. I could only, I didn't know. I just made my friends laugh until, since I was a kid. I would imitate them. I would draw cartoons of them. I would make up songs about them. But I would not, I, I didn't think I could. And then one day, I, so I was pre-dental and I was a disaster as, as a, a pre-dental student. It was all like these weed out kind of organic chemistry kind of courses right. that I was not up to talent wise. And, uh, how far did you get? Well, I did a couple of years and then I was, I just asked my parents, can I just take a year of like just taking NYU courses? And I, I, I had been at Cornell and I was like, can I just go there and take acting and communications and whatever? And, and I did that and I had a great time, but I realized it was like a waste of college. <laughs> to acting. Take, yeah. Yeah. I always wonder why people go to yeah, college. Yeah. Don't for... take, if you're watching, and uh, three of you are. No, that's Triumph's line. Sorry. No, but it is. You're right. No, but I think, Don't exaggerate. It's I, two. It's two. I, I just think you go to college, you get the, the, you have four years to get to listen to brilliant professors and get a liberal arts education. And, you know, don't, 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 don't focus on stuff that you can do after college. Take acting courses. You take a course, but don't major in it. Right. I don't know. So I went back to pre-dental at NYU. I was like, this is damage control now. I'm just going to finished pre-dental and then so at NYU I lived with my parents because I couldn't live in a dorm because I grew up in Manhattan and you weren't allowed to live in a dorm if you had a Manhattan You're residence local. it was yeah. awful so nobody knew me one night they had a stand-up comedy contest at like the student lounge and I was like well nobody knows me so if I bomb it won't be embarrassing <laughs> Cause I would pass the comic strip and like think maybe I should try it. But what if somebody recognizes me and I suck? I was that scared, but somehow at NYU. So I entered this contest and I, and I just wrote an act and I won. But what I would do, I did this weird Andy Kaufman shit to start it. I would like, I would come out and I was dressed as an Orthodox Jew. I had a big cloak and I had like a fedora and I, wore a cotton candy beard. I like went all the way. I took a subway to like Nathan's in Coney Island and got a bunch of cotton candy. And candy. Real cotton candy. Real cotton candy. And I just come out, don't say a word. And I just open up a prayer book, real prayer book. And I'm just like the old Jews in my synagogue. Just turning the pages like joylessly. Yeah. And I would just keep doing that. And, for how long until people started laughing that's, that's your kind of i humor. love that how? and they did they started laughing really hard and then i kept going until they started to stop laughing right and then i started to transition like this i would turn the page and then i would take off a piece of cotton candy and eat it and then turn eat. another page still like, like same expression on my face same like grumpy old jew and just eat your beard. You ate your beard. I would eat my beard, <laughs> turn the pages, and then that would start killing. And then, and then I would eventually like. What's be the over closer? With that, huh? What's the closer? No, then I would just like transition and do like more traditional stand up. But I. Did you ever notice? <laughs> no, I did like <laughs> shit about NYU and whatever. But somehow I won this contest and then I won another one at the comic strip against other college winners. And then I got to be on at 9.30, that was the prize. Right. And I did the weird shit again and killed again. But then it's like Richie Tinkin, do you know the old manager of the comic strip? He was the head of the comic strip. He's like, hey, it's good, okay, now you're gonna start at 1.30 and you know, work your way up. And at 1.30 at night, nobody wants to see. A guy eating his beard. Nobody, nobody. nobody. Just say something. <laughs> they just anybody who stays at a comedy club till 1 30 at night just wants you to talk to them <laughs> they just want to have a conversation there is something about that that i enjoy though there's something about um like i was just uh but I, you like crowd work so well, it's not like even crowd work i love when it's difficult i love 
three people <laughs> at 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> You're and just, born for that. But you I are. just, I like discomfort. Yeah. I think because my in my life and psychologically and just mentally I'm uncomfortable. So if I That's feel so funny, that cause... if I can, so I'm, I, I'm comfortable in discomfort. And if I can get right. into a place and. Right, as long as you're, you, you you own the discomfort and that relaxes the audience. Right. And yeah. and you know what? When there's five people spread out at one thirty in the morning in a dark room, yeah. so I'll go like after a concert, I'll go and say, is there a club? Well, it closes at 10. Do you think there's another couple of minutes left? <laughs> now it doesn't work so much because I, you know, I'll get no, I, I get recognized, right. but I, but right. I love just, I love what yeah. you just described. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. That's my favorite kind of comedy. I grew up, my, my comedy hero is, is Alan Funt because I, I Candid Camera. Candid wh- Camera was a show. I know okay. Candid okay. Camera okay. Okay. because okay. of him. Because of him. Because okay. Of him. Oh, I okay. used to show it to her all the time. Candid Camera was amazing. And it was Absolutely amazing. amazing. And, they, and the kids today, they don't do it like that anymore <laughs> because they, they try to make the character that they're portraying funny. It's, it becomes yeah. more about who's doing the stunt. A little bit, yeah. Than how the person is reacting to the stunt. It gets a little, yes, you're right. It's a little bit like overeager improv people. Showing and right. they pull away from the stunt too making fast. It, a lot making of the time. it about that instead of about the reaction. And also they pull away from the stunt too fast. Yeah, yes. because you don't get the reaction after like <laughs> right. a long pause or discomfort or whatever yeah. it is. They stop it too early. When you keep it going, when it's going and then it keeps going, you know, like when no, it's fascinating when, social experiment. When I was in college, yeah, I I didn't take all pre-med. I got to take some interesting courses. I took a Psych 101 class and they would play candid camera clips. Really? Yeah, because they, it's like you get to see how people react in certain situations and it's very revealing. That's know? my favorite kind of comedy. All right. This is another product, another commercial. Same lighting, Kenny. This is the same. This is not holiday lighting. Go ahead. You read it, Jackie. I'm getting a headache. Well, I don't have to read it. I could talk about the holiday season and how chaotic everything is and finding (laughs) gifts and everything like that. But that's why I love products that help me find some peace of mind during this hectic time of year. From earbuds that let you take premium audio wherever you go to power tech products that make sure you never run out of charge. It's Raycon. It's here to make... Raycon, my Raycon earbuds are the most comfortable thing with the best sound that I have ever had when I'm on the treadmill. Well... That's why it's here to make your everyday routine so much better this holiday season. My my routine. I use them all the time anyways. It doesn't oh just have God. to be the holiday season. I use them when I'm on the treadmill too. Or when I'm doing my hot girl hot girl walk. Well, I do when I do my hot girl walk, I wear my Raycons. Yeah. Oh, why couldn't Kenny? Please. <laughs> well, anyways, this past year, they expanded their entire business with the introduction of Raycon PowerTech and Raycon Home, like the Magic 180 charging cable, cable or the faucet filter. So they have even more products now that you could choose from for the holiday season for everyone on your list. What are you looking at, Dad? I'm looking at how much longer Kenny is at work. Because if he leaves soon, maybe we could change the lighting. Okay, well, anyways, hurry now to buyraycon.com slash how he does stuff to get 15% off your entire Raycon order. Perfect for last minute gifts or to ring in the new year. That's buyraycon.com slash how he does stuff to get 15% 15% off Raycon products by Raycon.com slash how he does stuff. That's it, Kenny. I don't want to see this one more time. Kenny, I said I don't want to see this one more time. This is one more time, Kenny, with the strobe. And I love that he brought in our liquid IV to show everyone our flavors when you can't even really see it because we're in the dark. Doesn't matter. <laughs> All the flavors taste amazing. And I have a problem uh, with hydration. Well, I don't anymore because I use liquid IV. I get... All my hydration, all my vitamins, all my nourishment. Well, especially this time of year during the holiday season because everyone is on the go all the time, like buying gifts and stuff like that. And sometimes you forget to drink or drink water. This is going to make sure that you stay hydrated. Also, there's all those holiday parties where, you know, people like to have fun. And you need to make sure that you're hydrated after those holiday parties so you don't feel sick and gross. But I use it all the time, even not for the holidays, because I use it, like I said before, on my hot girl walks. I usually use this one right here because it's sugar-free and I'm keto. So okay. I like this one, the white peach. I get the- all my electrolytes from it. That's what people say, <laughs> Howie, where do you get all your electrolytes? Liquid IV. You know what else I like? What? They're tiny, so they fit anywhere. They're compact. You just take a little stick out of one of these big bags and carry it with you wherever you go. Oh, no, my husband's calling me. He knows I like liquid IV. Yeah. 
and everybody in the family. It's good for everybody. It's healthy. How do they get them? Um, grab your liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code Howie at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop better hydration today using promo code Howie at liquidiv.com. Oh, you know what? Hmm. Kenny, if you're not going to help me, I'm going to use liquid IV. (laughs) Just take your liquid IV pack and put it over the strobe. Oh, it works. <laughs> really is. No, you, and I know you did great prank stuff. Like I you know. tried, but, but, but I had people over my shoulder, you know, noting me to death. But I would go, my own taste. Yeah. And that's what I love about you is you are committed and you seem to yeah. walk away when it becomes a little corporate or a little controlling. Yeah. And I think that you're one of the few people in this business of comedy that kind of is... Um, uh, true to yourself many times i can't see people it's kind of like larry david is like that too there's a few people yeah. that are l- like that where they're true to- way more successful than me <laughs> but i try i i i, I think I, you're incredibly no, successful. i know i, I, know. Think I that- could be richer i could be richer i could use the money but <laughs> well we can have a we can turn this the last part of the uh the last half of the podcast into kind of a telethon a, a telethon that would be great I'd use that, use that, uh, this thing here. That's a to, proto. To just, ask, just ask for money. No, but Howie, uh, it's so funny that you say, uh, that you talk about discomfort because this is something I wanted to bring up to you. When you would substitute for Regis Philbin, there, I was so blown away. There was never anyone more comfortable. The only, I loved Regis Philbin. And he, because he was, I, I always called him the least self-conscious person in show business. <laughs> right. Just, whatever, whatever's on his mind, he's going to say. I'm he here. Just, mm-hmm. I'm here. Regis what? is no, in the room. making me angry. What, what, you know, everything, whatever. Right. I love just, him too. Why can't I? What, what about me? Yeah. You know, he's just like, no, no filter, no filter. And you would substitute for him and you were so at ease. And I was like, I can't believe that this guy didn't take Regis's place. So I did Regis and then, and then they offered me my own talk show. They offered me, I had two choices. I could have been what is now the view. ABC offered me the, the mummies the were doing o'clock. a show. Yeah. The, the mummies, ABC were doing a show yeah. and Paramount off of what I was doing on, on Regis. And then Paramount offered me a syndicated show. And Arsenio told me about what the money is in syndication versus what the money is on network syndication so, is bigger in, in it, success yeah it yeah. doesn't really exist anymore but at no, that time it right did. right so i took this paramount show based on what i did on regis and then the machine began and then they would say to me well you got to take uh, your earrings off you know and and it, it's not really about the earrings but that's kind of indicative of right not being me you know yeah yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. we need you to wear a tie and Oh. I had this, uh, the, the, the person that I wanted to executive produce the show was somebody that was doing everybody's uh, stand-up comedy specials at the uh, time. You uh, remember Kimber Rickerbow? No. Well, anyway, it, it, she, was, she did uh, Billy's and everybody's special at the time. You know, there's always somebody that does everybody's yes, specials. Yes. She did specials for me. And I said, I want her to be the EP. And then Paramount said, no, 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 no. We need somebody who knows daytime TV. And they got into my head that you know, this is what the daytime audience, it's not like anybody you ever talked to before. I said, but you liked me on Regis, but that's different. That's a morning show. This is an afternoon. This is, this is 1230. It's a totally different human but being. I, I believe that, you know, <sighs> and it's kind of like, I, I, I worship David Letterman for what he did. Cause even when he did the- Morning show? Yeah, he, that was the late night show. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. tried to fit into something because I'm a good boy and I was told right. what to do. Right. And that's what I'm, I'm so blown away by everything you've done is just been funny. And it feels like I'm everything that I watch, whether it is a success or not, whether yeah. it's look well or love, it looks right. like he went, somebody gave him notes and went, fuck it. Cause I can't imagine when I see a pilot you, like that, yeah. like NBC, even getting what you were doing. Here's something that I've been very lucky to have, which is powerful people behind me that, the, the network trusts so that I get to do what I want. In Lookwell's case, well, that was Brandon Tartikoff, who's like the most oh, talented. He network. hired me for St. Elsewhere. 
There you go. Yeah. Most talented network executive ever. ever. Yes. When we met him, Conan and I, we were kids and we were like, this is now I get why this guy has this job. Because right. he was like a real student of television and really loved it. And uh, so he, so in that case, we got it partly just because he got it. But we also had Lauren Michaels behind us. And a lot of things I've done have been with either Lauren behind me or Adam Sandler, you know. So I've had the luxury of some powerful figure that kind of blocks. Kind of, Plays kind of, defense. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. And and so that's, so I, but, you know, sometimes I've taken a project that seemed to be all lined up to be a hit and managed to alienate the, like the Dana Carvey show. There's a famous oh documentary on the Hulu channel on it. I want to watch it. What's it called? Too, too Funny to Fail. And it's. So Dana Carvey was given a variety show at nine, ABC? 9.30 at ABC. Yeah. 9.30 at ABC. One of the funniest shows. Who was, the, the, just to the, talk about the ilk of people that yes. worked on that show. So Who, it's Steve Colbert, Stephen Carell, Steve Carell. Um, uh, uh, Charlie Kaufman was one of the writers. Louis C.K. was yeah. the, the producer under me. Uh, Dino Stamatopoulos, a brilliant writer of... Uh, it was like the who's who of... The, the writing but, staff was insane. Yeah. And then we also hired Carell and Colbert, gave them their first real TV jobs. Right. You know, and then we had other funny people in the so cast what's too. So what does the documentary tell us? The documentary just chronicles uh, the high hopes the show had, the, the problem of doing it on a Disney-owned channel. Like, you know, immediately... Wasn't that thing at the beginning, if I remember, I don't, I, I don't know that I remember, you had Clinton yes. uh, breastfeeding. The, the, we, we basically killed the show with the very first sketch we did. Was that the one I'm talking about? Yes. So, so we had this sketch where it started with Dana um, was playing Clinton. He did a very funny Clinton. And he's talking about how um, he was way ahead. Not George Clinton, but, uh, yeah, President no. Clinton. Bill. President Clinton... I know you know that. I do know I, Bill. I'm, I'm not I know gonna, Bill. Not going to condescend here. Mm-hmm. Wait, he, President Clinton. He, she knows Bill, but not like. Not like Monica. Not, there you go. Mm-hmm. See? Crazy. If you References. know Monica, that's, you know, that's something. <laughs> this was pre-Monica, though. Uh-huh. Anyway, so Bill Clinton had this thing where he used to say, I feel your pain. That was his catchphrase. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> Hillary at this time was very unpopular. I don't know. This was March of. 1996. I don't remember even the circumstances, but Hillary was like bringing his poll numbers down. So it's, he sets it up like saying Hillary has been placed in a facility and we cut to it and she's like rabid and banging against <laughs> the doors and trying to get out. And then I'm going to be both, I, I, you know, I'm the feeling president. I, I will be both the, the father and mother to this country. And then um, I don't remember, that was Louis's premise. And he, he said something like, I have developed the uh, ability with uh, the help of science to breastfeed. <laughs> and then he pulls out a nipple and starts breastfeeding, I think a child. I think we had a real <laughs> child in there. I can't oh remember. God. Maybe it was a doll. Uh, this is on ABC, Disney owned This is on that. ABC. <laughs> and it was a real, it wasn't a real child. It was a doll. Is there but not a then, clip of this? There, we'll oh, see there it. is we'll, a we'll, clip. We'll cut it in as you're uh-huh. saying it. Go ahead. So that was maybe, maybe we would have been fine. But then I had to interject. <laughs> I was obsessed with animals, you may know, with, between Triumph and yeah. a lot of other stuff I've done. And I was like, what if he's also, <laughs> what if he, <laughs> Is that how you wait, 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 oh, that's wait. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what if he's also, what if he also has the ability to, uh, what if he has eight nipples? That was my thing. Yeah, you just had to. He have eight nipples. <laughs> and then we start bringing puppies and kittens in. <laughs> and everybody's like, that's hilarious. So we did it. On ABC. On, on ABC. Disney. I watched it. I, th- I was laughing hysterically. But here's I was the on thing. the floor. Here's the thing. Ford? I didn't understand that Home Improvement, which was the lead in, it was the number one show on television. And I didn't understand that it was like a family show that 
kids and parents watch together. Right. It was on at nine. It wasn't in the family hour. Tim Allen, you know, had a history of, you know, dealing Coke or whatever. He had like, a, he had this dark side that I thought, oh, and then Pam Anderson was on the show. Right. So I didn't think of it. I didn't, I never watched it. You thought it was Coke and porn. I didn't, uh, not <laughs> quite, but I thought it was prime time version of Coke and porn, whatever that was. See, my take is you thought it was a family show. That's why you had babies and animals sucking on teeth. <laughs> <laughs> if only I had if I had only had a strategy of some sort, but I didn't. I was just like, this is funny. Wait, wait, it's funny. <laughs> and Louie crazily said, you know what's great about this idea? This is going to draw a line in the sand. You're either with us or you're not. And it's like, that's the last thing you want to do <laughs> on primetime television on your first show. Like, yeah, well, let's alienate half the audience. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Rock and roll. <laughs> we were so naive. And then it wasn't literally till like four weeks in that I watched an episode of Home Improvement. And I was horrified. I was like, what have I done to Dana Carvey's career? <laughs> How did I not watch this show? And in, in the making of, in, in the, the ideas, did the network not see script? Oh, yeah, and, they saw everything. So did no, they, they were did behind they? it. Everybody at ABC was cool with it except one guy. David Weston, he was the head of like news at the time or something. He was way higher up and he was really angry about it. But all the other executives, they don't say this in the, in the show, in the, in the documentary, they pretend that they were like outraged by it and that we fought them. But no, it was only this one guy, David Weston, who, and then by the way, like within a year, everyone else had been fired except for David Weston. He was a pretty smart guy apparently. But, um, yeah, no, they they were totally for it. And the sponsor, we also had this gimmick. We called it the Taco Bell Dana Carvey show. That was Dana's idea. Like, because in the old days, in like the 40s, it'd be like Texaco Star Theater. This, and, well, she knows it's it's like like YouTube now. Yeah. They Where sponsor. The, you they can integrate your, your uh, product with whatever the show is. You don't think that's like podcast too? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, he's no, it is. It. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, so the sponsor's name used to be on television shows. So yeah. Dana thought it would be funny that we would change it every week. So Taco Bell was the first week. And they loved the sketch. They had no notes. The second the sketch aired and there were all these letters coming in, they were like, we apologize. We had nothing to do. We didn't mm -hmm. know. And, and then we, the next week, we had a new sponsor because that was the plan. This was like mug root beer or something. And everybody thought, oh, no, Taco Bell pulled out. Pulled out. That's why yeah. I thought it was a sponsor. Yeah, no, everybody thought that we lost our sponsor. <laughs> so it, just everything, it was a Murphy's Law situation. Oh, I, but uh, it's that, it, yeah, yeah. like uh, when when the stars align, like the fact is, I don't think, in my, in my uh, history in show business, have I ever seen a lineup of on-camera and behind-the-scene people that illustrious, that yeah. equipped, yeah. And fail so brilliantly, abruptly. Yeah. But 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 it, it was very and loud. It's so much so that it's a, yeah. it's a Hulu documentary. Yeah, now. no, we there were spectacular flames that we went up in. Yeah, but you have uh, always you've endured, endured. I've endured. Well, you, you know, I had a very similar challenge when we started the Conan show. You know, that was, that I was left Saturday time. Night Live. He was, the head, he was the first head writer of, of the Conan. Conan, Conan show. And that was, with, we were even more ballsy with that because it was 1230. We were replacing David Letterman. And I was all about, we're not going to do anything Letterman's ever done. We're going to change this up because it was like my dream. That's still the most exciting job I've ever had. The late night, running a late night show? Yeah, because, I mean, David Letterman was our hero. Right. I mean, you know, and, and the, the opportunity to create a new version was just an absolute thrill and we tried everything crazy shit and you know a lot of the comedy was working conan was very nervous and and kind of you know he, he wasn't a seasoned performer at that, that was the thing you know i, yeah, I yeah. thought that the trouble at the beginning when it was like yeah, if yeah. it was so iffy was more about yeah. his performance I than what the what, content that made him so likable though i remember that you know i remember what? loving you, him because i felt like he was so real yes and, yeah and you he, know i watched some of these early shows and he's so charmingly scared unassuming yeah yeah and i think there was an audience that agreed with you but like adults critics 
Maybe. We're like, he sucks. He's too scared. He's but not. But I remember like, when it started, he was my favorite. But it was, was also, yeah. it was also that the, the network wasn't sure. Like the network would put you on, but yeah. they really didn't support in the, in well, as we far had as Lauren you, Michaels again. If yeah. we didn't have Lauren Michaels who made this incredibly bold choice to let Conan have a shot at this. Right. You know, and if we didn't have Lauren, we would have been off the air for sure. How long did you stay at, at Conan? I only stayed for like a year and a half because I got burned out because I, I like it was so thrilling to create the show. But then like as head writer, first of all, you don't have a lot of time to write. You're managing all this other material. And second of all, you've created all these incredibly exciting bits, you know, whatever it was in the year 2000, right. and actual items and the staring contest. You know, we created this collective um you know, body of work that, but then you have to just like, okay, um, what haven't we done in a couple of weeks? Okay, time to do another staring contest. It just becomes like refillable. So did you walk away? I did walk away for a couple of reasons. I, for that, like it was starting to feel creatively unfulfilling, but also I was a newlywed and I had spent like eight years at Saturday Night Live with the same girlfriend and just, I'd always put the show first. And even when I was living with her and then like it coincided, the first year of Conan coincided with me getting married. And once I was married, it just felt like I, I just can't do this. I can't be a husband like this. It sucked. I, I would still, the job was so grueling and I would come home like at midnight every night. And that was just, I, I just felt like I don't want to, I don't want this to be my marriage, you know? It's one thing when- But you walked away from something that is yeah. absolutely huge. As that kid who went on that amateur show at NYU to think that you were gonna be the spearhead of a oh, network yeah. late night show and then oh, no, to make that it was, choice. It was, it was the greatest job I've ever had. It was an incredible thrill and blast. But I just- um, a lot of it really, and, and then I also got offered to do a, to write a movie that I was going to be in. This is another thing. When you talk about, you said something earlier about how like your favorite things are shit that you no one's seen. Right. So like one thing we did this summer on Conan's podcast, Conan, Dana, Kevin, and I read aloud this Hans and Franz movie that we right. had written. Right. Uh, which is one of the funniest things I've ever been a part of writing, but. Then me and Bob Odenkirk got offered to write a Chicago super fans movie. Like that bears that thing. I created, yeah. that's a characters I created with Bob at Saturday night live. Right. And like, that was really exciting. I was going to write it and I was going to be in it. So and, what happened? Oh, well, you know, it's like, it's like the Hans and Franz movie. It was like too crazy. It was, it's like, I got, even with Lauren Michaels, even with Lauren Michaels. Yes. <laughs> What? Even with Lauren Michaels, that one I could not, I could not get that bad. Same, same with the Hans and Franz movie. We just, they were just too crazy for Paramount or whomever the company was uh, that did Hans and Franz. This one was Paramount, and I, I don't know. It was a great, it was a great script. Uh, we did it later at a charity event, and it killed. So it was and and that. and is it still too? It's too late. Oh yeah. Well, first of all, Chris passed away. You may have heard. <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, I mean, we've done things in Chicago, but after Chris passed away, I was like, I never want to do, George has done the super fan character right. on SNL. I've had right. him go back, but I never wanted to do it without Chris. I never uh, wanted to, it just seemed wrong to sustain it on Saturday Night Live. I've done it in Chicago with George, like little appearances, but right. never wanted to but do I'm it. But I was just thinking just a concept and yeah. you can do it with other actors. You've never considered that, like even redoing that. Mm, mm, I don't know, no. I mean, it's funny because that's like a catchphrase that won't die. Well, that's, that's why I'm saying. It's, it's so it's, funny, like in Chicago and even on, on sports broadcasts that you constantly hear that. When people talk about the bears, they still go, that bears. That bears. Yeah. And that came it's from crazy. what? How did you come up with that? Well, I was, so I gave up stand up comedy because I couldn't sustain, I couldn't motivate myself to go at 1 right. 30 at night. I just couldn't do it. And then I ran into Tim Kazarinsky. He I was love an actor. You know Tim. I know yeah, he yeah. is. He was a, a cast member. Yes. He had just been hired. He had done like two shows at Saturday Night Live and 
I recognized him on the street because that's what how level of nerd I was, comedy nerd. Tim, Tim, Tim Kazarinsky. <laughs> and he was like, you recognize me? And then I told him that I had done stand-up and that I just didn't really know what to do with it. And he said, you should try sketch if you like sketch. You could go to Second City. They have a class, uh, Players Workshop, it's called. You could take it. You could do it in a summer. And when he said that, I was like, ding, 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 because I was in oh, so commi commitment-phobe. Uh, but a summer, I'll do it. I'll, uh, so I moved to Chicago for a summer, and then I met all these great people. Chicago, for people who are into sketch comedy, it's, I still think it's the best place to get started because it's really about doing great work and focusing just on that. And there's so many venues where you can do sketch comedy and, uh, still, still. Yeah. In Chicago, not in other cities. They, they have these classes, right. UCB or whatever in other cities, but Chicago, I mean, I didn't get into second city. I just formed a group with friends of mine and then we funded it ourselves. It was in a very small theater and we managed to get like the Chicago Tribune. We had a really pushy guy in our group who like got the got Chicago Tribune to re to review it, and he gave it a great review. And that's how we got. Then we got moved to a bigger theater, and we were a big success. And then Franken and Davis saw us. And so Leo is the number Leo. one animated movie on <laughs> Netflix. What's next? That's jumping way ahead. Yeah, Leo two. I hope. I don't. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> what is the most bizarre idea you have that you have never been able to get done? Oh, Jesus. Well, I wrote another script for Adam that I love. It's called Squidgen, and it was about squirrels and pigeons mating <laughs> in Central Park. Right. It was a horror movie. Yeah. A comedy horror movie, and the central character was Adam's... Adam used to do... Maybe you might remember this from SNL back in the Chris Farley era... He used to stand up in the audience, excuse me, excuse me. He would interrupt a sketch and he was like, Pat, don't you understand, Pat? We love you for who you are. We don't care if you're a man or a woman. It doesn't matter. And he'd get all invested and yeah, yeah. emotional. So I wrote a whole movie around that character and made him an autograph hound. And uh, something breaks his heart and he runs in the middle of Central Park and somehow convince somehow gets squirrels and and pigeons to mate yeah and then they become uh it's it becomes a horror movie and makes sense it's Squidden. makes sense <laughs> no it's 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 one of my favorite scripts i've ever written and, and even now you have when is the last time you've showed it to a studio or anybody actually i rewrote it a couple of years ago for Adam, he asked me to. Right. And then the studio that owned it was like, mm, we're not giving it to you, $4 million or something. There's some they, they were still going to charge an exorbitant rate. He wanted to do it on Netflix. and But they, they made it prohibitive. So then he wrote Hubie Halloween, which is very funny. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. But he... Uh, so that's they own that and are hanging on to it for... I don't know shit works. I, 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 I still don't squidgen. know. Mm -hmm. I want to see Squid. So you know, uh, <laughs> you know, make it create a campaign. Who owns it? Who who has the rights? Know, maybe New Line. I'm not maybe sure. New Line. Is there still a New Line? I don't even know. I'm so I live in a bubble. I live in New Jersey, <laughs> and when people tell me to work, I'll, I go to work. I, I honestly, I love I your bizarre, crazy, out there <laughs> ideas. There's got to be. Do you have anything else like Squid? Well, I got to say the the Hans and Franz movie was like a giant hit. On Dana's on, on on Conan's show, and now people are like clamoring. You got to make this. And Arnold came on the show yeah. after it aired because I I like played Arnold. I used to play Arnold on Conan. Yes. You I would do this crazy Arnold voice. But then Arnold came on Conan. It's like I saw these shows. It was so funny. It was like, well, Arnold, you were in it. <laughs> We wanted you to do it. Right. Yeah, yeah, I, you know show business. I don't know what happened. But, that, but we should do it now. <laughs> now he's like, we got to do it now. And it's like, okay, well, the whole point of that sketch, that show was like to do it at the height of Arnold's movie stardom. Right. Um, but who knows? I would imagine who he knows? still feels he's at the, at the height. He is. He's still larger than life. He's amazing. So maybe there is a way to do it now. Yes. What know. about uh, Hans and Franz get attacked by squidgens? Mm. Blend the two. Blend the two, whatever it takes. And and throw in some Dana Carvey show sketches. Oh, yeah, and squidgens and then have like an eight-nippled president. 
Just I, just put it all, mash it up all into together. one thing. You are absolutely brilliant. You are out of your mind. You are, cool, I, cool. Can't, I can't tell you how thrilled I am to have you here and uh, your dog. Thank you for Thank bringing you. him. Yeah, he's in a, bringing... he's back in his Dwayne Reed bag now, where he belongs. You have an inter, do you have a a, a brand deal? <laughs> <laughs> With Dwayne Reed. <laughs> now you blow. Dwayne Reed is a, totally a, a East Coast. Oh, it is an East pharma- Coast thing. Sorry. Pharmacy. When I'm on the West Coast, I should say CVS. Yes, <laughs> but maybe people even overseas. It's a pharmacy. But I also want to take a moment right now. Um, we have this guy Lou Dinos. Lou, oh, good. Lou, Lou. I, I, yeah, That's I know it. Lou. Start let's, it. Let's, let's let's see. Let's see what he's got. It's Please. time for Lou. Lou, 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 Lou. It's a Lou moment. Like I know that he eats chips and he's right. walked in here a couple times. Lou, Lou, Lou. Why are I like here, that Lou? the we setup is longer than Lou's. Motherfucker. Lou, yes. punch it up, Lou. Hoopity <laughs> hoopity do do. Hoopity hoo. Doopity hoopity do. Lou. Please let me finish this. Umbrella in a can. I was... It's not over yet. It's not. She's oh my gosh! All right. I, I know. It's Lou mostly makes... on you. Huh? Well, it's because Michael put his Dwayne Reed bag in front of the smoke machine. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> Lou, you can yeah. eat. You can eat disgusting food all you want in front of me. Thank I have. You. I have horrible uh, eating habits. So you've seen my. I work. got them from my dad. I've seen your work. <laughs> my dad used to eat like watermelon to the deepest part of the rind it was so fucking disgusting i can hang is that good for your teeth him. no it was not <laughs> he, he used to bring me candy and stuff he didn't care so i'm but. sitting there <laughs> yes lou <laughs> this was like so funny you guys both of you so fucking funny and i was hoping i was wishing it was yesterday because yesterday what happened i was so funny i was so funny i was funny four times straight Four, Four times, times straight. Is that a record? For me, it's a record. And one time I was funny about crumbs. So Crumbs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was so fucking is funny. Is there any possible way you can recreate that? I can't remember. It was yesterday. <sighs> but it was about crumbs. It was, uh, one, of the, one of the things I was funny about was about crumbs. There was four crumbs? of them. Crumbs. You don't know the other three? Yeah, maybe we com- can jog his memory. A lot of comics don't do that. Um, Don't do crumbs. That, oh, you tell a me, name that's a like a third rail. That's what I'm Rape saying. Rape and crumbs. Yes. Then they're crummy. You don't comics. touch Don't you that stuff with this kind of stuff for the moment that he has. The fact that he carries a briefcase. <laughs> I love it. With all this, oh, I, oh, he's I got do, notes. He's hey, got he notes. Can I do a yeah, prank phone call? Can I do notes. a prank phone call? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. A real prank. A real prank phone, real call? Prank phone call. Because sure. I've I've been uh, work, doing some character work. When I was a kid, I I so I'm going to call a a. Um, you can talk, Rob. A debt collector. I'm going to call a debt collector. Yeah. I'll get. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what mine were after. All right. I'm going to call a debt collector here. here. It's okay. All right. It doesn't matter. Debt collector. He's got it coming. Yeah. So if I'm already rooting well, for I'm gonna you. I'm going to pay him back. I'm, the, the idea is I'm going to pay him back. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Should you hold it closer to the mic? Is oh, he yeah. on speaker? Very good. Thank you, professional. Yeah. yeah no. I, there. Not there. He's not answering. Oh uh-huh. man! So I was gonna call the deck collector. It's time for okay. Lou. That was it. Lou. No, thank you. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Maybe next time we'll get to the deck collector. Why are you here? Lou? You want some fucking <laughs> ship black, <laughs> motherfucker? Lou, punch Lou. it up, Lou. Lou. Oh, oh, he's you gonna sign this for me? Are you signing this for me? Wait, we need to figure out for me again. We need to figure out who gets these autograph photos. Okay, come on, come on, get it. Because it's the third one I'm giving you. I'm gonna sign it. Okay. It's time for Lou. Okay, that was it. That was it. No, that's, that's it. That's it, Lou. You got to go. All right, bye. Oh, Lou. Very nice to see Wait, you. I hardly actually, knew ye. Can we actually figure out how people could win these um, autographs? Because I have three of them now. <laughs> yeah, we'll send them to people. All right. I you used to uh, prank people this way, Lou. Lou, here's how Thank I used you. to prank people. Yeah, I used to call. Go, go in the other room. I used to call. Don't stand in front of the camera, Lou. <laughs> He's standing in front of your camera. <laughs> I came up with a way to prank people mm. where you're re- requiring no wit and right. no improv skill. How's that done? So I think you can still do it. You can yeah, you can use the merge on your cell phone. Basically, you call two. basically you call two places yeah. that have the exact same name. Like you call two subways. Yeah. You know, it's like, Subway, can I help you? Yeah, Subway. 
Can I help you? <laughs> Can I, what do you, you call me? <laughs> no, Subway. Who is this? Subway. Yes, Subway. <laughs> that kind of thing. And then it, it was so cruel. And, and one time I did it with Adam McKay. We called two pizza places that have very similar names. Right. Like, you know, Napoli and Via Napoli. Yeah, yeah Napoli pizza. No, no, Via Napoli. Napoli pizza. No, Via Napoli pizza. <laughs> and we would call them. And then Adam McKay had this cruel streak where he's like, call him back. Like, because it's always would end in somebody hanging up. Right. But Adam McKay, this one time I showed Adam how to do this and he just was like, no, call him back. And they would do it again. And the guy, and one guy would get really mad and the other guy would get really scared each time. <laughs> I love that. And yeah, I love that idea. Get the fuck off. You better stop fucking calling me, man. <laughs> I'm not calling you. I swear I'm not calling you. I love that idea. And yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to charge you guys and ladies. Who are do listening. It, who are listening and watching. <laughs> so cruel. I want you to record so it and send us the recordings and we will play your recordings. Of our your email. What's okay, our do email I get, again? Do I get like a, a dime are. each time this happens? No. I, need, I need like a... No, go to HowieMandel.com and we'll no. figure out. No. no, no, no. What's the email? <laughs> what do they do? HowieMandelDoesStuff at gmail.com. HowieMandelDoesStuff at gmail.com. Can you call at smiggling at least? Can you at least call it Yeah, smiggling. smiggle two people together. <laughs> Smiggling, get to send two. us your smiggles. Send us your smiggles. <laughs> we send do it for the smiggles. smiggles. Have a happy day. The bro. last time we'll we take did, a so smiggle of the week. At one point, <laughs> at one point, we called these two pizza people back again, and the guy's like, "Hello, oh, via Napoli," and the other guy just says, "Why?" <laughs> <laughs> well, you're amazing. Leo is the movie. Netflix. Leo is the, is the go to howiemandel.com for. Uh, uh, Whatever your needs are in merch or whatever, <laughs> and, and we'll help you. Um, we'll help you. We'll help. We will. And uh, subscribe. And uh, do you want to just? What do you, do you have any closing words? Uh, Night of too many stars. If you're in the New York area, which is a I, wonderful I'm doing uh, that December 11th. Adam Sandler, John Stewart, Stephen Colbert, um, Amy Schumer, Rachel Bloom. Uh, Ron Funches, uh, oh my God, who am I leaving? And out? does that air on? Uh, this one is not airing. This is just a live show. It's going to be really lo Chris Rock. Yes, oh my God, it's going to be live and very loose and crazy. And uh, so if you're, we'll in check the New that York out. Area, and it's a great cause too. Thank you, autism. Okay. Bye. That's it. That was nice. That was good. Thanks. That was funny. Good, good. I hope you had fun. I had an amazing. Time. <laughs> I think you're amazing. I had a I lot of questions you, for you. Okay. I did. Yeah. Yeah.